Good day, my dear classmates and to our dearest professor, Sir Dito Morique. I am Karen Ann Aikenlas and here I am to report about the problem-based learning. So let's get started. For the overview, the pedagogical approach that enables students to learn while engaging actively with meaningful problems. Students are given the opportunities to problem-solve in a collaborative setting, create mental models for learning, and form self-directed learning habits through practice and reflection. The philosophy of PBL. Hence, the supporting philosophy of PBL is that learning can be considered a constructive, self-directed, collaborative, and contextual activity. The background of my study According to Wadani, last 2014, the problem-based learning is a learning method through which the learners gain and develop upper-level skills, such as problem-solving and critical thinking while eliciting information from personal, real-life experiences and acquiring determinate knowledge about their own learning. Another study from whom last 2013, PBL is an instructional method that aim and preparing students for a real-world settings. With requiring students to solve problems as the main format of the instruction, so the PBL enhances students' learning outcomes by promoting their abilities and skills in applying knowledge, solving problems, practicing higher-order thinking, and self-directing and reflecting their own learning. So the PBL or the problem-based learning is designed with several important goals. First, it is designed to help students to construct an extensive and flexible knowledge base. Second, develop effective problem-solving skills. And last, develop self-directed, lifelong learning skills, become effective collaborators, and become intrinsically motivated. So we'll go now to the discussion. On the other side, White on 2001 emphasized that the, while the content and structure of PBL courses may differ, the general goals and learning objectives tend to be similar. In his research, White indicates literature review shows that PBL is characterized by student-centered approach. So, the PBL is uh, therefore a uh, teacher as act and facilitators rather than disseminators. And open-ended problems are common. And also, according to White, he also stresses that group work is also an essential aspect of PBL for several reasons. First, group work helps develop learning communities in which students feel comfortable developing new ideas and raising questions about the material. In addition, group work enhances communication skills and students' ability to manage group dynamics. And finally, Group work is interesting and motivating for students because they become actively involved in the work are held accountable for their actions by group members. So we are now under we understand that PBL is more on uh, student centered. As noted by White, in problem-based learning literature, the term ill-structured is used to describe open-ended problems that have multiple solutions and require students to look at many methods before deciding a particular situa solution or so situation. For these reasons, group work can enhance student achievement. However, Groups do not always work effectively without guidance. So, as an educator, we are here to guide our learners. Usually, the instructor facilitates and monitors group interactions because 
many students have not been taught how to work effectively in groups. Well-designed, open-ended problems that require the input and skills of group members also are essential to positive group work experiences. As noted by White last 2001, in PBL literature, the term illustrated is used to describe open-ended problems. Next, we go to the problem-based characteristics and the problem-based learning cycle. First, we must begin with the problem or a complex scenario. Second, brainstorm to understand the nature of the problem. Third, assign each another responsibilities for resolving specific questions before the next class. Fourth, teach other the findings from specific questions and last, integrate new knowledge and skills in the context of the problem. So, in first step, the student learning begins with a problem to be solved rather than facts to be mastered. So, it also enhances student motivation because concepts are learned in the context of the application and the students address questions that are of interest. For the step 2, okay, students gather information and consult resources to fill conceptual holes and address misconceptions. So in this stage, uh, the students may uh, define and brainstorm to other learners so the students can ca uh, gather information, ideas, uh, any ideas that can other learners uh, discuss and explain to other students. On, this, on the third step, the students and the, their peers learn to find the process new information and work towards resolving the problem by asking and answering each other's questions. So in this step 2 and step 3, the, uh, it has the interaction with the other learners. How about the step 4? So in this step, the students define new areas of required learning. So when we say required, uh, they, are re they, are, they already define the new areas of required learning. So dig, it also digs the deeper into the problem and learn effective communication skills while becoming influential members of productive team. For the last step, the students integrate new knowledge and skills in the context of the problem and enhance collaborative skills of acquiring, analyzing, and communicating information. So what are the characteristics of problem-based learning? First, it is a student-centered and experimental. When we say student-centered, the nature of PBL is to select authentic assignments from the discipline, preferably those that would be relevant and meaningful to student interest. So this is more on student-centered. So another characteristic of problem-based learning is inductive. When we say inductive, this characteristic is to introduce content through the process of problem solving rather than, rather than problem solving after introduction to content. So we go to specific to general. How about another characteristic is builds on or challenges prior learning. In, the, in that case, as some relevance to students, then they are required to call on what they already know or think they know. In this situation, by focusing on their prior learning, students can test assumptions, prior learning strategies, and facts. So, we have also the characteristics of uh, context-specific. When we say context-specific, uh, students choose uh, real or contrived cases or the facilitator or the educator choose real or contrived cases and ground the count in the kinds of challenges faced by practitioners in the field. Okay? 
So problems are complex and ambiguous and require metacognition. So this characteristic select actual examples from the real life of the discipline that have no simple answers. So when we say problems are complex and metacognition, so thinking about thinking, it also requires the students to analyze their own problem-solving strategies. And the last characteristic of problem-based learning is collaborative and interdependent. So the students have uh, have su uh, students work in a small groups in order to address a presented case. In this situation, by collaborating, the students see other kinds of problem-solving strategies, discuss the case using their collective information, so that students can now uh, gather information to other learners and combine it, so they will have the generalization, so this is what we call the collaborative and interdependent and take responsibility for their own learning. So, we go now to the conclusion. So, the problem-based learning embraces the principles of good learning and teaching. Because it is a student-directed, of course, it promotes the active and deep learning. It also encourage, uh, encourages self sufficiency and is a preparation for lifelong learning it often includes or requires the peer teaching uh, when we say peer teaching that is what we call the guide by sight so which encourages students to digest information so that they can present into the group with some degree of authority but also it taps into existing knowledge and this gain has to be digested knowledge that in, can be explained and used confidently. So for the references, this is my references. So I think that would be the end of my presentation. Before I end my presentation, I would like to end this by going back to Albert Einstein quotation. So in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So during this pandemic, there is no reason to water down the learnings. As an educator, we, as an educator, we must look for positive side or create opportunities for our learners. So we are able to extend our hands for our learners to meet the learning objectives so that the learning should never stop. So my dearest classmates, school leaders, and to our dearest professor, Sir Dido Marike, People are successful, successful are not lucky. They are just prepared for opportunities that come on their way. So thank you for listening. And I hope that you have learned so much from my presentation. Thank you and goodbye.